Hi, my name is Sutton Thomas, and I'm a staff scientist with Thermo Fisher Scientific. Uh, today, I want to introduce you to the Invitrogen uh, Flow Cytometry Panel Builder, but really focus specifically on how this can help you with your spectral panel design. And so what you can see here um, is that the first step in this process is to pick what your instrument is. And so in this case, I've picked the SciTech Aurora, which is a five laser instrument that has uh, lasers off of the UV, violet, blue, yellow, green, and red. And you can see here that it notes that it is a spectral flow instrument and the number of detectors that come off of each laser. Um, if you wanted to look at other instruments, um, you can also, for instance, uh, the Bigfoot is available as a spectral instrument um, and each of the auroras uh, with the different lasers, as well as conventional instruments. And so the panel builder knows whether you're selecting for spectral or for um, detector-based uh, conventional uh, panel design. So in the next step, uh, what I've done here is actually add in a number of antibodies and reagents. So in this first step, you can select the target species. And then just to save time, since this is a large panel, I've gone through and built out uh, what you can see here, the um, different uh, antigens as well as the color that they're in. And just to show you how this works, for instance, in this last part, you can see that there's CD38 and you can add this just by typing in uh, the CD38 here and selecting that. And then you can also go to the fluorochrome. And uh, in this case, I'm using APC eFluor 780. And these, um, this particular part of the selection process is really saying, okay, this is what the baseline panel is, but it will help you evaluate that and decide, you know, what other floors you might want to use. And so in terms of any fluorescent proteins, you can see uh, that those can be added, for instance, GFP or tomato, if you had those in your panel, um, as well as the antibodies that you might need. And so in this case, just to show you, this is a panel um, that uh, was adapted from the 35 color panel that uh, was designed by SciTech. And you can see here, what I've done is actually go through and select a few antibodies that um, instead of matching them with the colors that are here and not related to actually the panel design, just to evaluate uh, where we might want to add them, um, put those into the panel builder. And so here, what you can see is that, for instance, CD4, 14 is added um, and as a human target. And when you go in to put these in, you can say, okay, is the protein abundance low, medium or high? And so in this case, this is, has high abundance and this uh, then allows you to match. It means you could use a less bright floor with a you know, higher abundance protein. In addition, um, you can have something like CXCR5, which is a lo more low abundance protein. So you might want something brighter. And so this allows you those options as, as you're looking at your panel. And then in addition, um, in, in this case, we want to have a viability reagent. And since we're using Nova floors, we'd like that to be a fixable viability dye. And so you can actually select you know, which, which that you want. Um, you uh, don't want to use an intercalating DNA dye with the Nova floor reagents. So going on to the next step, uh, what you'll see it, as it uh, goes through and computes with this large panel, um, you can see a number of things. So you can see the complexity score, you can see the filters that are listed as well as kind of what that range actually means. This is showing you for the entire panel, um, but some of these um, are, you know, for instance, if you want to highlight the BUV395, you can see that that's excited predominantly off the UV and not so much other places. Um, you can see that uh, basically there are a number of floors. Some of this needs to be lined up better, um, but you can see that there's a broad spectrum across here. Um, and so as you go through and look at the panel, there's a few things I want to draw your attention to. And so the first one is to look at uh, this complexity score. And um, this is uh, being calculated as you go throughout the panel. So the complexity is considered to increase as you add each one of these. And this mimics what has been uh, done with the uh, Bigfoot software uh, for the spectral sorter. 
And you can see that, you know, as you add some of these with the colors, uh, the complexity is not increasing that much uh, on a spectral, spectral instrument. And then there are others where this actually increases more greatly. So the first place where you see, you know, a pretty large jump, jump is with, you know, having this area with uh, BV421, super bright 436, and E4 450. And so if you go into the comparison matrix, you can actually look at that particular region in the violet and uh, see that a number of these um, can be more similar. And so you might want to pick something else. In this case, they've been assigned to um, regions that aren't expressed on the same cell type, uh, but that could create issues. And so you can actually go through and look at that and look at specific areas. And so in this darker blue areas where there may be issues are highlighted. Um, another place that I think is interesting as you go through, um, and again, you know, this complexity score is just showing you as you built it. So if you put these in a different order, you would see that number increase. Um, so this is sort of where the complexity score is at this particular place. Um, another thing I think that's interesting um, is that, you know, when you have something uh, like, you know, Nova Blue, Nova Floor Blue 530 and BB 515, um, you can see that that's not really increasing the complexity score that much. Uh, but when you add in Fitzy, uh, then you actually uh, are have a, having this other big jump in the complexity score. And again, if you look at the complexity matrix here for that region, and this is something when I've presented some of the 40 color uh, work that we've done, where you see uh, what I like to refer to as bunching. And you can see that uh, Fitzy um, and BB515 are actually um, pretty similar. So you can see here's uh, BB515 going across. Um, and then uh, the Fitzy there, uh, 98.5 um, similar. Um, and so you can see this, these are indicating what's going down and these are what's indicating going across. So that's where you can see that with Fitzy and BB515, they're 98.5 similar. So that's really not something you'd want to build into your panel so much. Um, but a number of these dyes are more similar. And uh, what you find is that the complexity score is noting this area where you're starting to have not just a change in the similarity index where you might want to build around that, but also a grouping where this becomes more difficult to unmix. And so, uh, going back to this, you could actually go through if you wanted and uh, go backwards, for instance, to the antigens and change out what you're using in that case. Um, for this illustration, I'm not going to do that so much, but you could actually then say, okay, maybe we don't want to use an antibody we have when we want to test something else. But just to show you more about the panel builder, um, I'm going to go back with this example. And so as you go down towards the end, what you can see is the antibodies that have been added where there are um, no um, dyes associated with those. You can see there's just this list. And the first thing to note is that what the panel builder does is put these in order, for instance, of most restriction. So the human IgD antibody um, is only available in four thirds uh, fluorochromes that you haven't already used in the panel. And so you can see those. Um, so you can see how much this would increase the complexity score. And so this is suggesting that uh, that might be the order that you would do them in. And then all, also which other antibodies are already used up. So for instance, if you decided that, oh, I really wish I had this in one of these colors, you might change out what antigen you have on something else. So it really is this nice process of allowing you to do that. In addition, um, then, you know, as you select these, you can see that, um, you know, some of these are going to be more bright dyes. For instance, super bright 600 is going to be bright versus Alexa Floor 700, which is um, going to be a dimmer dye. Um, and so if you just want to allow it to computationally assess what you should add, um, you can say auto select. And what you see now uh, that's happening is it's actually going through and saying, okay, of those available dyes, you know, what adds the least complexity? Now, I would still suggest going back to 
um, the comparison matrix and really assessing places where these might be more similar than you'd really want to use. And especially as you get into the darker blue, you might switch out some of what's happening here. Um, and in some cases, these have been arranged so that there's not really an issue because uh, these wouldn't be co-expressed, but it's worth you know, thinking about as you're going through the panel design. And so you can see that it's selected for these different dyes. Uh, the one thing it has not done is picked for the uh, viability dye. So you can also look at what's available. Um, so in this case, for instance, um, we were using the live dead blue in that previous panel. You could also use this um, other fixable viability dye that uh, adds less um, complexity to the panel. Um, but again, it, you know, you still want to keep evaluating what, you know, what you're looking at. And so you can uh, continue to make, you know, those decisions as you go through. And so in the next step, because it says that you already have these antibodies, you can go through and select you know, what you might want to have. So for instance, here it's recommending CD14 and then over for blue 555. And you can see you can select either 100 or, five, or 25 test versions and then select, you know, what you want to, uh, might want to purchase. Um, you can see here that since you, it has selected the super bright 600 um, that you would uh, then you could select here. And then um, again, you might, um, you might end up switching the super bright 600 uh, into the CXCR5 because you really need that brightness. Um, but if you went with what it was suggesting, this is uh, what you'd select. And again, you can see which test case you want. Uh, with CD4, you have another example here. And so this has different clones. So you can actually go through and say, okay, you know, what do I need? Well, I know I'm going to be putting this on super bright 700 based on what it was suggesting. So I don't think I need something that, you know, gives as much separation. For instance, SK3, you can see gives more separation than the OKT4, just in terms of the antibody clone. And so in this case, since, you know, you don't need extra brightness here, you could select this product. And so then as you keep going along, you can then see, okay, um, should I use, you know, what viability dye do I want to use? Do I want to use this one? Or, you know, if you went back and wanted to use the blue viability dye, you can select that. And then the next step, it uh, is a very simple process. It gives you the catalog numbers, the floors, and the price um, for that process. So this would then allow you to purchase the antibodies as desired. And so um, with that, I think, you know, it's, it's worth really thinking about these, some of these places where you are building into the panel design um, and really able to assess in a different way. Um, so I, you know, still um, would recommend that you need to test, you know, where are the places that are of more spread, but it, this gives you the ability to really say, okay, you know, I've worked through my panel. I've tried to look at what is causing uh, additional spread and where, um, you know, there aren't so many issues and, um, you know, I can even go back through if I've assessed this, uh, I can even go backwards to this step and say, okay, wait a second, let me take one of these antibodies out of my panel and then uh, look back at how that might affect what I'm seeing both. So it's a way to combine both panel design as well as the iterative data. So I think it provides a lot of opportunities. Um, so with that, uh, I wanna thank you for your attention and um, I hope that you, this new panel builder really helps as you're building out uh, your own spectral panels. Thanks.